Our scripture this morning comes from John 15, 26 through to John 16, 15. I have my Bible here, but I've learned that the words are far too small, so I read it from a paper where I can blow them up so I can read them. John 15, 26. When the advocate comes, whom will I send to you from the Father? The spirit of truth who goes out from the Father. He will testify about me, and you must also testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. All this I've told you so that you will not fall away. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, the time is coming when anyone who kills you will think that they're offering a service to God. They will do such things because they've not known the Father or me. I have told you this so that when the time comes, you'll remember that I warned you about them. I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you, but now I'm going to him who set me. None of you asks me, where are you going? Rather, you're filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to be with you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because people do not believe in me, about righteousness because I'm going to the Father where you can see me no longer, and about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it's from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. Let's pray together. Lord, we ask that you fill us with your Spirit We pray that we may hear the words that you have for us today. Give us courage to live out your word in our lives. Lord, please fill Pastor Claire as he brings us your message this morning. May his words bring comfort and challenge as we continue to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. It's great being together with all of you. You know I like you. I really enjoy being your pastor. It's a joy to be serving with you. I'm putting these words here this morning in the beginning because I'm going to use some language that could really unsettle you. But I want us to think beyond where we are at today. I want you to think beyond where you are at today I want you to think beyond our generation of where God is taking us today. This is the beginning of a year and normally I work on vision and this is no exception. Some years ago I was sitting with a friend of mine named Ahmed Haile. Ahmed was a Somali brother. He had become a believer. And He was a phenomenal missionary, minister, carrier of the good news of the gospel, a peacemaker. And he lived in the house near where our offices were in Kenya. And on any given afternoon, he would have two sets of warlords that were fighting in Somalia, sitting down with tea, and negotiating peace agreements between the two of them. Stuff we never talked about while it was happening. A phenomenal person, a person that most of us could even only imagine possible to work with. A great friend, a mentor, a partner in ministry. But later in life, Ahmed developed prostate cancer, and I was sitting with him as his supervisor at that time. And his days had already been numbered. He had exceeded all of the treatments that he could have. 
And he said to me in this meeting, he said, I'd like to go back to Djibouti and start another school yet just because I think they need one. I said, well, Ahmed, what if you die on your trip? And his wife looked aghast and rightfully so, wondering what in the world was going on in the head of her husband. And he said these words, and I want you to hide them in your heart. He said, Claire, if you can get past dying, you can actually live. If you can get past dying, you can actually live. Profound words. A person who lived his life that way. He was negotiating a peace agreement between two rival groups in Somalia, and I think you're very aware that the situation there was no picnic. And as he was leaving, somebody fired a rocket-propelled grenade, and it blew up, and he lost a leg. And he was taken with a wheelbarrow, imagine that, days later, and trying to get him out of the situation, and eventually found his way here to America, where his wife was, in a hospital. And he recovered, even though they said there was almost no chance of him recovering. If you can get past dying, you can actually live. It's how he lived. Now today's sermon and today's topic, I thought I'm planning to leave was going to be my title. And then I thought that would get everybody worked up and maybe I should have used that title. But when we read this scripture from John chapter 16, I started in verse 15, there's probably four, five, six sermons just in this section. But I'm a one-point sermon kind of person. And so I'm going to pick out one section, and we're going to play with that today because I think it's important. It's the beginning of a new year. It's also working on the third year that I've been with you as a congregation. But later on in this scripture, in verse 7, We read these words from Jesus. He said, unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. Earlier there, he said, it's good if I go away. I remember when we started our work in Olipolos in Kenya, I told the congregation when we were starting that I was planning to leave. And I think it's fair for you to understand that as well, that I plan to leave. But that's why I've started with the words that I like you guys, I enjoy being with you, but I plan to leave. We need to work and minister as if we are going to leave. And so often as we work and minister, we try to develop places for ourselves and my ministry and my ego and my comfort. I like being here. I like being comfortable. I like sitting with you all. But ministry is bigger than just being comfortable. Unless I go away. If I don't prepare to go, what kind of ministry will I develop? You see, if I don't prepare to go, I will develop ministry that's going to depend on your pastor doing everything for you because, after all, I'm always going to be here. I'm going to be jealous if you start performing better than I do or preach better than I And some of you do a very good job at it when you preach. But if I plan to go, I will begin to utilize and to mobilize each one of you to minister even beyond my own capacity. God wants to work with us. 
Over the last two years, I wanted to do a bit of a summary of some of the things that we talked about as a congregation. You remember the first sermon I talked about spreading your curtains wide coming out of Isaiah 54. Making us uncomfortable and embracing people that just aren't like us. Moving left and right in a politically charged society. And embracing people. We talked about blessing and the concept that the blessing is 333 times more powerful than a curse. And God's blessing wants to be poured out on you and for you to pour it out on other people as well. To bless them. We talked about church to you, and the reality is we cannot be waiting for God to bring people to us, but we should be listening to the Spirit and driven by the Spirit to minister to other people beyond the walls of our church. We talked about being imperfect people, reflecting God's love, and I think that describes your pastor for sure but also you, because this is not a congregation of perfect people. We are people that are imperfect, and the power of the Spirit is working through us, transforming us, and we continue to reflect God's love even in our imperfections. We talked about, is your pastor saved yet? And thought about how, is it possible that God would call from among those who we may perceive as pagan, to potentially become pastors and people who can minister back to us. We talked about what holding on and letting go and not holding everything and figuring out what is God asking us to hold on to and let go of, and assertive grace and giving grace to those that we don't agree with, especially with people we don't think deserve it. We played with Beatitudes and ministering women and spiritual gift, recognizing that we would prefer those, there would be, we would prefer that there were no apostles, those that are sent out from us. Think about it. We're uncomfortable losing people, but yet John David and Ariel went out from us and are ministering in Iowa, doing a phenomenal job from what I understand. Apostolic sent from us. And then you remember that catchy sermon title, Naked and Unashamed, and I still smile at that one. Am I really open to be naked before God, recognizing all of my imperfections, and recognizing that God knows everything about me? a bruised reed and a smoldering flax. God does not discard us even in our imperfections. And then the God particle. And imagine over the last number of weeks, imagining God's goodness, His embrace, His song, His robe, and last week, His dance. I preached almost 120 sermons. I tried counting, and I think it's something like that to you. My question is, has it made a difference? Does it change your life each week? Are you living differently? Or is it just words and knowledge that are coming in? This week, Gerald Hershey and Mike Lilly and I were, was it this past week or the week before? I forget. We were sitting together and talking. They're transitioning the leadership for the church council. And they asked me a question, well, Claire, are you going to renew here at Waynesboro after your term's up this year? And it made me start thinking. You know, it fostered something in my heart, and I realized that I have not really been leading as if I was leaving. You see, this pandemic has created a dynamic that we, all of us, are trying to survive. Well, let me be careful about this. Let me be careful about that. You know I want to make it through this. 
And psychologically, I think it affects the way we do church as well. We begin to act in a protect, self-protection mode instead of leading like Jesus who said it is better if I go because or I must go so that. And I believe that God is working in our spirits and it's time for us to be living as if we are leaving. And that's not just for your pastor, it's for each one of us. I believe that God is calling us to be living out our lives as if we are leaving. Did I say living or leaving? So often, we want to be comfortable with the place that we are at in life. But all of us know that our time will come when we will no longer be here. I believe that we need to be thinking about those types of things. What is it that we want to leave behind in our lives? Where do we want to go? Why can't we live that out now? Legacy is something we work on as we walk through life and we prepare to go. Jesus said it this way in Matthew 16 and verse 25, For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will find it. You see, if we're leading or if we're living as if we're leaving, we are passing on everything possible because we know that our lives are limited. I will look for the best in you and I will foster that and I will encourage you and I will be thrilled if you're better than me. You see, this pandemic is messing with our heads. We want things the way they used to be and they never will be. Effective leadership is always looking to develop the gift of other people because I know that I will not be here forever. And over this next year, I would like to put an emphasis on preparing to leave as a way of ministry and philosophy. You see, I believe that God wants to utilize us even at the stage we are in life. Regardless of your age, let's continue to prepare to leave. Survival, self-preservation requires that others are able to do everything that you do and beyond. If I In preserving myself, I will try to be the center of ministry at our church, but it's almost, but it's not just about me ministering, it's about all of us ministering. Over the last year, I've asked somebody to preach every month. Somebody said to me, Claire, but I'd like to hear you preach. Is it necessary for the pastor... Is the pastor the only one who is able to preach effectively and to uh, fulfill everything? By no means. We must mobilize the gifts within our group. I remember sitting at my father's bedside before Beth and I moved to the Congo, Eastern Congo. He had just started hospice. We knew that his days were numbered. We weren't sure how many he had left. Maybe a year, we thought. But as I sat with my dad, I reflected on his life with us, knowing that we would not see him again. He had passed on all of his knowledge that he had to us 
There wasn't anything including finances that he had not shown to us as we walked as son and father. He taught us everything that he could about farming, but he also allowed me to explore and to expand in mechanical things, and he was not a mechanic. But as he was laying there and we were talking, there was nothing left that was unfinished. That's how I want to live. Not just at the end of life, but I want to live that way as a minister, fulfilling all that I possibly could do today, recognizing that tomorrow may not be here. You know, my father was free to go because he had passed everything on. He led, he fathered as if he was planning to leave. And though there is this emotional longing to be with him, there's no unfinished business. We have learned all that we need to learn and we pass on to the next generation. But I believe as we walk together here as a church over the next year, let us mobilize each other <laughs> for effective ministry. Let me lead as a pastor as if I were leaving at the end of this year or the end of this month or the end of the next, next month. Let's release others to do the things that we are doing as well. Are you leading your life or are you living your life as if you were ready to leave? Or are you in a self-preservation mode much like myself? Do you have unfinished business with other people that you need to work on? What will your legacy be? What knowledge and expertise have you not passed on to others yet? What do you want to do with all that you've accumulated? Do you lead others as if you're leaving? Mike and Gerald's question created a pastoral leadership focus for me. I want to lead as if I am leaving. I am not planning on resigning or leaving at this point. However, I must lead as if I'm leading. Leaving. Prepare to go. If you can get past dying, you can actually live. Live as if you were leaving. Let's pray together. Lord, pour out your Spirit upon us, we pray. Give us vision beyond our present day, beyond ourselves, beyond our comforts. Lead us so that others will flourish. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus, be the
that again. Jesus be the center. Jesus be the center. Be my source, be my light, Jesus. Jesus be the center. Be my hope, be my song, Jesus. Be the fire in my heart. Be the fire. Bye. 